Are you willing to go to Christ so that you may have life? The life that Jesus was speaking of in this statement, as you may imagine, was not physical life. No, Jesus had heaven on his mind when he made this statement to the Jews. So I would ask you today, is heaven on your mind? Are you willing to go to Christ so that you may have life spiritually, so that you may have life eternally? Ten years ago, on the second Sunday in August, I preached my first public sermon on this second Sunday. And I preached heaven on my mind. Now, I'm not sure how many of you will recall this song, but heaven on my mind was a song that was sung by Luther Barnes and the Sunset Jubilers. This was a song that We used to sing in the boys' choirs many years ago at church. Heaven has always been on my mind. Heaven, for me, it has always been very intriguing. I don't know about you. Since I was a little boy and learning about heaven in the church pews, I have always thought about what heaven looks like and what it would be like to be there in heaven. I learned that heaven was a place where good people went after they passed away from this world. Mm -hmm. I was taught that old familiar scripture from the third chapter of John's gospel and the 16th verse that said that those who believe in the only begotten son, they go to heaven and they have eternal life there. Mm -hmm. Through songs, I learned that when I get to heaven, I would get my own pair of shoes and I would walk, I would dance, I would jump, I would shout all over God's heaven. So heaven, it always sounded like a fun place to me. It sounded like the place where you want to end up after having lived life in this world. So I was baptized at eight years old wanting badly to take part in communion with my mom and with my grandma, of course, as I have told you all in the past. But I also I also was baptized because I wanted to be able to see heaven one day. I drew pictures of heaven. Living with the desire to see heaven, I want you to understand that it has always been a major part of my life. It has been a major part of my life for a very long time now. I say all this today because I want you to understand, I want you to know where I'm coming from when I tell you that heaven is on my mind. Because heaven is on my mind, I have done my very best to live my life in a manner that is Christ-like in order that I may be able to see it in order that I may be able to reach it, in order that I may be there one day. Now, something that has always bothered me is this feeling of being one of the few that truly desire to one day be in heaven. From the time I was in middle school, I have always felt as part of a minority among my peers in that I live with the desire of wanting to see heaven one day. I remember being in school and it seemingly being fewer and fewer kids that went to church and believed in God as I progressed from grade to grade. Nowadays, I look at the church pews and the proof it is there. So few people my age and younger fully seem to believe in the Lord today. 
And I tell you, frankly, that this troubles me and it troubles me a great deal as I am often left wondering why it seems that so few people don't care about God. Why it seems that so few people don't care about going to heaven. During my examination prior to preaching my first public sermon, I was asked, why do you desire to be a preacher? I was asked, what is your goal? My response to those questions was this. I had been called to preach. I had been called to preach by the Lord at a very young age. Those who uh, was around when I was little, those who are still around today, they would tell you that they could clearly see that that was the case as they called me little preacher boy. Secondly, my goal is the Lord's goal. I will go on to add that I wanted to reach out with the message of the Lord, with the message of God to all of those who are my age and younger. A message of the kingdom of God. You see, God desires for us to be there with him. And here we are 10 years later, and I'm still driven to share the message of the kingdom of God to whoever I can reach out with that message to. I'm also still driven to get God's message to those who are of my generation and younger. You see, heaven, again, I tell you today that it is on my mind and I desire to get to heaven and I desire for you to be there with me. So I desire today for heaven to be on your mind as well. As I said last week, there are simply too many empty husks wandering the earth today as the rejection of heaven, as the rejection of God to continues to grow more and more with each day that passes by. Again, I ask you today, is heaven on your mind? The desire of going to heaven, I believe, I believe that it boils down to our mindset. I believe it boils down to your mindset, whether it is a focus on your mind and whether or not you focus on today or tomorrow. Do you rather live for the now or do you rather live for tomorrow? What I mean by those questions is, do you rather live for this present age or do you rather live for the age to come? The age uh, to come is eternity. As shown here in our key verse for today, the Jews specifically here, the religious leaders, you're told that they searched the scriptures and that they desired heaven. However, their hearts, their mind, their soul was more given to the world. It was given to this present age, if you will. What this meant for those religious leaders is that heaven was not on their minds as it should have been. Heaven was not truly their focus. Heaven, it was not their priority. Now, we know this to have been the case because the manner in which they lived is portrayed to us throughout Scripture on how the scribes and the Pharisees live. Jesus said that the scribes and the Pharisees lived in a manner so that their works could be seen by others. The religious leaders, they enjoyed having places of honor at feast while sitting in the best seats in the synagogues, Jesus said. In the 23rd chapter of Matthew's gospel, you see that Jesus said that if that was not enough for them, they enjoyed being able to walk through the marketplace to the praises of all of those that were around them that would call out to them, Rabbi, Rabbi, as if they were something greatly to be praised 
by others. The scribes and Pharisees, they live with the desire that is worldly rather than a desire that is heavenly. I tell you today that that is a desire that many people share today. You see, they would much rather be praised. They would much rather be exalted in this world by man rather than enjoy the praise and the exaltation from God in heaven. Jesus there in that 23rd chapter of Matthew's gospel and in the 12th verse, he warned the scribes and the Pharisees of this worldly mindset. He warned them saying, whoever exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Jesus said there. If heaven truly was on their mind, the scribes and the Pharisees, they would have chosen to follow him. They would have chosen to follow Christ and they would have lived their lives to be exalted and to be rewarded by God in heaven. Yet we know that the scribes and Pharisees chose to antagonize Jesus every which way that he went. We know that the scribes and the Pharisees, they chose to reject Jesus Christ. Many are of that same mindset today. Many are the mindsets of today that are more focused on this present age than the future. That is the eternity to come. Heaven is seemingly far from the minds of many people today. There is seemingly little thirst for wisdom. That seemingly little thirst for knowledge on life beyond this physical flesh of ours. People seemingly rather gain the world so that they can gloat about what they have gained rather than be praised by God. They rather be praised by others than see the Lord in his heavenly kingdom. I tell you today that there is life beyond this physical. There is life beyond your flesh and your blood. Yes. So why do we seemingly not desire to come to know more about what is beyond this physical world? Why do we seemingly not desire to come to know more about what is beyond our flesh? To me, this is a thought that should push us even more when it comes to seeking to learn and to know as much as we can about life that is beyond this physical. In other words, I suggest to you today that we should seek to know more about life that is spiritual. See, I'm not talking about life that is elsewhere on some distant planet or on some distant moon or maybe in some faraway galaxy. I'm talking about a life that we know of because Christ testified of this life to us. I am talking about life that is spiritual. I'm talking about life that is eternal. I'm talking about life that awaits us in God's heavenly kingdom. Is heaven on your mind? I ask you yes. again today. Yes. Are you living with a mindset mm -hmm. to where heaven is your focus? Mm -hmm. Are you living with a mindset today to where heaven is your priority? Yes, Answer me today. Well. If heaven is not your focus, we need to work on changing your focus. We need to work on changing your mindset to where heaven becomes your focus so that we can begin living for eternity rather than living for this present age. Now, some may not understand the thought of living for tomorrow. Some may not understand living for heaven. Some may not understand living for eternity. 
The reason why I say this is because we have been taught to live in the present. I imagine that all of us have heard this encouraging saying before. Live life as if today is your last. Or maybe you have heard the saying, live like there is no tomorrow. Yet, I tell you that if heaven truly is on your mind, we have to learn how to move in this present age, being fully aware of what awaits us tomorrow. Now, someone may ask, why do you say this, preacher? Well, we'll see here today in the fifth chapter of John's gospel and in the 25th verse that Jesus, he said it himself. Jesus said there in the fifth chapter of John's gospel and in the 25th verse, he said, most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is the future. Jesus said is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the son of God and those who hear will live. Jesus said there. Again, he said the hour, the future is coming and now is. As genuine believers, we have to understand and we have to live with the mindset that the day of God, the day of the Lord is always. It is always knocking on the door and it can come at any moment. That is how we have to learn how to live. Jesus, I want you to understand. When he said there that the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the son of God. Jesus, he was speaking of his second coming there. The dead in this 25th verse speak of all of those that will have died genuinely believing in the only begotten son of God with a desire to see heaven, with a desire to enter into heaven. In 1 Thessalonians and in the fourth chapter, scripture proclaims to us that both the dead in genuine faith and those living will hear Christ on that day, the day of his coming. And when they hear his voice, they will live on spiritually. They will live on eternally. Jesus, he, he plainly tells us there in the 24th verse there in the fifth chapter of John's gospel. He tells us plainly that the genuine believer is one who hears his word today. Who not only hears his word, but believes in him who sent Christ. This believer has everlasting life. The one who believes in this present age. The one who believes and has faith today. This one has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment. Jesus says there. So again, I will tell you today that it is imperative that we change our focus. It is imperative that we change our mindset to live for the hour that is coming and now is. Again, I want you to understand today that we are all knocking on the doors of eternity as the son of God, as Christ can come at any moment in time. Again, I ask you today, is heaven on your mind? You see, the second coming of Christ is one that is spoken of throughout scripture. This is something that we should not take lightly as some do. Some mock, some joke about the second coming of Christ. But scripture speaks about it over and over and over again because the Lord wants us to be aware of the hour that is coming and now is. In the book of Daniel, Daniel, he spoke of the night visions he had when he saw one like the son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. To him, Daniel said, was given dominion and glory and a kingdom. 
Daniel saw his dominion and it was an everlasting dominion and his kingdom would not be destroyed. The him there that Daniel was speaking about again was the son of man. Daniel was speaking about Christ. He was speaking about the second coming of the Messiah. In the words of Christ, we see Daniel's vision. We see his vision fulfilled as Jesus in the gospels. He spoke about how he would come in the glory of his father in a cloud with power and with great glory. Jesus said, Jesus, he then said that he will send forth his angels with the great sound of the trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds. That's from all directions north, south, east, and west. From one end of heaven to the other end, Jesus said that the angels would gather together. You see, I tell you today that this is why heaven is on my mind. This is why I live in the way of Christ. I live this way because I believe. You see, I believe in Christ I believe in his word. Jesus said that he is coming. I believe that he is coming and I want to be ready for when he comes. Heaven, I want you to understand today. It is real. It is real because again, Jesus said that it is real. And as we know, the Lord always fulfills his promises. One day, God is going to gather together his children. He's going to gather together all of those of genuine faith. And he's going to bring us into his kingdom. And we will dwell in heaven forever. This is what Jesus said to us in the 14th chapter of John's gospel. You see, this, it reminds me of a song that I used to hear all the time. And this song, it asked the question, the song had asked, what will you be doing when Jesus comes? I ask you today, will you hear his shout? I ask you today, will you be gathered up by his angels? I ask you today, will you live on when Jesus comes? These thoughts they should cause those dry bones that we spoke of in the Sunday school lesson recently. These should cause those empty husks that I spoke of in my sermon last week. These should cause all of those to start to stir about, to wake up, to get ready. Again, I tell you today, heaven is on my mind and I want heaven to be on your mind. This should call your attention to focus on how you are going about living in the world today. Because Christ he is certainly on his way here. Whether you believe that or not, Christ, he is coming. Christ is knocking at your door. So those who live for the present age and not for eternity, we need to understand this today. You need to understand that Christ is on his way here today. You see, all those who live for this present age, there are those that refuse to hear the Lord's words. They refuse to believe in his only begotten son. They will not hear his call because they refuse to believe today. They will not hear the sound of the trumpet because they refuse to hear and believe in him today. Like the scribes and the Pharisees, they rather hear the exaltation of those around them today rather than receive the kingdom of God tomorrow. Now, I feel I must ask all of those that live for today. I must ask all of those that rather hear the exaltation of man. I must ask them, where's the praise of man going to get you? Where is the praise of somebody else going to get you tomorrow? Again, I bring this to your attention today because compared to ancient days, 
where people live with a curiosity about what happens after we leave this world, about what happens after we pass on physically from this world. Too many of us, we live with no thought about what comes tomorrow. Why is heaven not on your mind? Too many of us are living as if God is not watching us. Too many of us are living as if God is not judging our every movement. Too many of us, we are living as if it is not going to happen, as if Christ is not going to come again. I tell you today that this is a mindset that is totally foolish. Even more foolish is that some live with the mindset that they are going to make this place heaven. There are many people today that try to make this world their eternal home. Again, it is said, live as if today is your last or if there is no tomorrow. The thought behind this saying is that you should make today your best day. However, people tend to push beyond that simple sentiment as they choose to live with absolutely no care for anything. All they want to do is push for heavenly happiness on earth. Listen to those words there. There are people who push with the desire for heavenly happiness to be experienced on earth. Sadly, living with that mindset, living by that doctrine has caused many people to blindly grind and hustle for the riches of this world in order to have heavenly happiness. Understand this. Heavenly happiness cannot be found on earth. The riches of this world It's not going to give you heavenly happiness. Sadly, what this doctrine has done to many people has done nothing. It has done nothing but increase anxiety. It has done nothing but increase stress. It has done nothing but to increase world, uh, to increase worry. It has, in other words, Done no good. Imagine for a moment trying to make this place, trying to make this world that is polluted, that is corrupted, not just physically, but spiritually. It is polluted. It is corrupted by sin. It is corrupted by greed. It is corrupted by violence. It is polluted by killing. It is polluted by murder, by pestilence, by disease. Just imagine trying to make a world like this your heavenly home. There is nothing, absolutely nothing about what I see of this world outside of nature itself that puts me into a heavenly frame of mind. I don't look around and and see heaven around me. There's just too much mess, too much sin, too much wickedness. For me to see heaven anywhere on this earth. People think that they can set out to the stars and and, and make uh, a place somewhere else on another planet or on, on, on the moon somewhere and think that they'll be all right. Heaven won't be there as well. Sin will follow man everywhere man goes because that's what we are. We are our sinful creatures. Every which way I look, I see nothing but wickedness with very little good being able to break through the wickedness. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he asked it himself. What profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? That's what happens when we try to make this place our heaven. People become empty husk. 
People lose their soul. They lose their life. And I'm not talking about life physical. I'm talking about life that is spiritual. Jesus, he asks again, uh, what profit is it if a man gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man gain in exchange for his soul? Soul is the most special thing that we have. That's what we should care for the most. We should desire for our soul to end up in the best place that it could possibly end up in. This place, this world, this physical reality, it ain't the best place for our soul. It's too corrupted by sin. One soul is completely lost to be able to ignore God's heaven for a world that barely scratches the surface of the true heaven. Those that end up trying to make this place their heaven gain nothing but a world that is riddled with corruption, a world that is riddled with sin. And I tell you that heaven is on my mind today. I'm in this world and I do care about this world, but at the same time, I don't care about this world being my heavenly home. Heaven is on my mind today. Not this world that is corrupted, not this world that is polluted by the sins of man. I encourage you today to live with a mindset that does not focus on living in this present age, that don't uh, focus on living for this present age, but lives for the day that is coming and now is. To live with this mindset. The mindset that focuses on the day that is coming and now is. We must let go of the mindset of this present age that causes us to grind, that causes us to hustle as if this world could be our heaven. We must let that mindset, we must let that worldly mindset, we must let it go. Let it go today. Let us remember that Jesus encouraged us not to worry about what we will eat, what we will drink, not to worry about what we will wear, where not to worry about this world. Jesus said to us, seek first the kingdom of God, seek first his righteousness. That should be our focus. Heaven should be your focus. Heaven should be on your mind. Jesus, he encouraged all of those that would choose to follow him to first deny themselves. We should first deny ourselves. We should deny those worldly desires. Jesus then said that we should pick up our cross and that we should follow. We should follow him. You see, we cannot be like those scribes and those Pharisees. That's who Jesus was speaking about in our key verse for today. They desired heaven, but they could not desire themselves. They could not deny themselves. They could not deny this world. They could not do so in order to even follow Christ to heaven. There are so many people today that can't deny this world in order to follow Christ to heaven. There are so many people today living and walking this earth that cannot deny themselves their own desires in order to follow Christ to heaven. I tell you today that we must be willing to let go of this world and go to Christ so that we can follow him for the better world that is to come. That is heaven. Now, this will certainly sound like foolishness to many people. Genuine faith as it is, it often comes off as foolishness to those of no faith. Now, faith, as we know, it is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. There is a thought that the Lord is asking for us to have blind faith. By believing in the God that you and I, we can't see by believing in a place heaven that we cannot see. Yet I would tell everybody today, 
our faith is not blind as some love to believe. Paul, he wrote to Timothy and therefore to us as well, that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. In his second letter, Peter stated that we have the prophetic word confirmed knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation for a prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy spirit. Peter, he said to us that they did not follow cunningly devised fables. They did not follow tales, but that they were eyewitnesses of his, of God's, of his majesty. Today, I tell you that heaven is on my mind because I choose to believe the eyewitness report of those that were eyewitnesses of the majesty of Christ. Christ being God in the flesh. They witnessed God with their own eyes, and I believe their report. Their report is good for me. Heaven is on my mind today because I choose to believe in the one whose work I've seen before my very own eyes as he has brought me through much. I tell you today that God has brought me, as the old folks used to say, he has brought me a mighty long way. I've been through storms. I've been through famines. I've been through the wilderness. I've been over mountains. I've been through valleys. God brought me through all of it, through my trials and through my tribulations. It wasn't by my own might. It wasn't by my own power. It was not by my own authority. I have none. God has it all. And he did it for me. And I believe that he does it for you as well. I stand in witness of my Lord today. As Jesus said to his disciples, he is the way, the truth, and the life. That is to say that he is the way to the kingdom of God and life eternal in his presence. He is the way too. And I stand in witness in my faith and believing in that. And that is what I preach to you today. Do you desire to live on in heaven? Is heaven on your mind today? I hope that it is. I hope that it is because heaven is coming. The kingdom of God is coming and Christ is coming with his angels. He's coming with his shout. He's coming with the trumpet. He's coming to gather together those who believe today and are prepared for tomorrow, for the place that is being prepared for us today by Christ himself. Do you desire to live on in heaven? Again, I ask you today, is heaven on your mind? Let us humbly receive the Lord's instructions so that we can live for heaven and one day enter into his heavenly kingdom. In the book of Proverbs, Solomon, he encouraged readers to hear, to receive instruction and be wise and do not disdain, do not hate it. Receive instruction today. Heaven is on its way here and you better get ready. Receive that wise counsel today. Solomon, he would go on to say, blessed, happy in the soul is the man who listens, is the person who listens to me watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. Solomon had wisdom to give. Today, the one that is watching and waiting outside of the gates of heaven, that is waiting for the Lord, that is watching and waiting for Christ, I tell you today, they will find life. They will find favor in the Lord. Jesus, again, I want you to understand, he confirmed this thought for us when he encouraged all of us to come to him and that he would give us rest 
if we were to simply go to him. Blessed, Jesus said, are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed, Jesus said, are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed, Jesus said, are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed, Jesus said, are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I want to be blessed today. I don't know about you. But I want to see the kingdom of heaven. I want to have the kingdom of God. Do you desire to live on in heaven? Is heaven on your mind? Let us live not for this present age, but let us live to be partakers of God's glory in his heavenly kingdom. Let us live today with heaven on our minds. Heaven, again, it is on my mind today. And I certainly hope here at the end of this message that heaven is on your mind and that you desire to be gathered up by the angels, called home by Christ, to receive the rewards that await you in the kingdom of God. Amen, amen, amen.